Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. We're gonna do a four part uh, video series on IP telephones. And the first one we're gonna do is on 4600s and how to statically assign them. We'll do dynamically next. But what you wanna verify first is you wanna go into your PBX and you wanna go into display system parameter customer options. And you wanna go to page like nine or 10, depending on your version of your PBX, and check for product ID IP phone. You look here, you see that you have a limit. And if there's a number there, there's a, a, a number greater than zero. <laughs> it, it tells you you're allowed to add IP phones to your PBX. Take note of this product ID because I'm gonna show you what that relates to in another screen in a little bit. And you can see I've already used two out of my 450. So once you've verified that you have uh, IP phone licenses available to you, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some 4600 telephones, all right? Uh, 4610, 4620s, 4630s, whatever, whatever you're gonna get. Now the reason I'm breaking this up is because 4600 series telephones have to be updated via TFTP, whereas the newer types of phones, the SIP and the IP1600 series, 9600s, they can be updated via, uh, via the web or via a web interface. And I'll show you how to do that in those videos, all right? But this one's on the 4600s and statically assigning. So next thing you wanna do is you want to go in and you wanna add your phone. So we're going to say add station 1015 and I'm going to say 4630 because it is supported natively and we're going to say IP screen phone because this is what this type is. You have to give it a security code and there's my lucky number that I like to use for these for these examples. I'm going to give it a coverage path of 13. Core 13, cost 13, you get my point, all right? Um, actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this a little simpler, dupe station 1013, 1015. IP screen phone 1313, F3. All right, so there you go. I'm duplicating my existing one just because it's a lot easier for this example. If you wanna understand duplicate station, go check out that video. All right, so now that our station is added, um, you want to go in and verify a few things. First thing you want to verify, uh, we'll do 1015, why not? You want to go make sure that your uh, IP audio connections and all this is set up properly. Now, I'll talk about this in more of the VoIP section of the videos I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, because they're more advanced, they're a lot more detailed and a lot deeper, so, but as long as your, your, your system is ready and supported. Okay, I need to edit that out, that was kind of stupid. All right, now that your station is added, you wanna go in and you wanna get the files ready. You wanna, you wanna unbox the phone, get it ready, get it plugged in, get it set up, and be ready to go. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna go to the Avaya support site and you wanna get the files that are gonna support, um, support the phone that you need to update because 99% of the time when you, get a, when you get an IP telephone, you're gonna wanna go update it. And you always wanna update it to the latest, that's just me. All right, so what you want to do is you want to go to, let me start this over. <clears throat> okay, so now that you've added your phone, display station 1015, you've added your station, it's ready to go. You can now go get the files that you're going to need to update your telephone if it needs updating, and 99% of the time it needs to be updated. All right, and the way you do this is you go to support.avaya.com and you click on downloads. You click on A to Z list. The reason I do this is because the first list that comes up is the numbers, which is the telephones. So once you're there, click on 4600 series IP telephones and it takes you to the homepage of the 4600 series IP telephones. Now, unfortunately, you gotta go click downloads again. It's kind of a user feature I don't like on their website, but that's just me. Once you've clicked on downloads, it brings you to the files page. Now the files you're gonna usually use, because unless you have a 4630, you're gonna go up here and you're gonna find the latest IP telephone release that, that you have. And the, the, obviously the latest one here is the 30909 or March 2009. And what it does, it takes you to the page that has the files, the TFTP server, and the 46XX settings file. We'll talk about each of those. But I'm gonna go here, the process is the same. But because I have a 4630, I have to go here and get it from here. But essentially, it's the same. I'm downloading three different files to support this. Now, a note on TFTP servers. You can use 
uh, TFTP servers like Pumpkin. I use I've used them all. Um, use Pumpkin. You can use Solar Winds as TFTP. As long as you have TF TFTP server, you can use the S eighty three hundred as a TFTP server. And there's some instructions in the documents on how to use it, how what files you need to download for it. But Avaya provides one. Avaya provides a TFTP uh, server software. But take note of this special little note here. There's a known vulnerability with this software that allows outside TFTP root directories. All right, Just take note of that and plan accordingly when you use it. I'm going to show you how to set this up um, appropriately, if you will, based on their recommendation as well as the software that I'm going to use here. All right, So I've already downloaded this. Uh, but I am going to go download these files here. Now, I'm going to download the 46 settings file first, or save target as, and I'm going to put it in my 4600 directory. Now, I create two directories, okay? I created the TFTP folder, like they said, and I have two different folders in here. I have 4600 and I have a 1600. We're going to do the 4600, and the reason I do this is because unless you become really proficient with this file, this 46 settings file, um, and understand the different file types for all the different phones. You want to have a separate one for each type of phone, okay? And let, again, unless you become really proficient with it, which I'll show you a specific video just on the 46 settings file, uh, you can have you can use just that file for all of your phones. All right, so that's how fast it is. It's only 12k. We're going to download these files here. Right click, save target as. I use the zip because I don't want it. I don't want the executable that they provide to install the files for me. I want to do it myself. Again, 4600, save. And guys, I'm going fast just to get through this video because it's a pretty lengthy video. Just pause where you need to and take notes because um, that's just, like I said, I want to get through these videos so you don't have to sit here and watch something all day long. All right, so we're going to extract all. Say next. I'm going to back this out because I want it to install right into my 4600 directory. Say next. You can see it's populating. And finish. No, finish. And there's the files. There's the 4600 or 46xx settings file. There's the SCR, which is not a screensaver. It's actually a script. Um, and it tells everything to go get all these different files from my phone. Now that I have that downloaded, I want to go configure. Oh, and by the way, if you want more information on this TFTP server file, you can go download this PDF that talks about it. All right, so we're going to minimize that. And what we need to do next is we need to, before we actually update the phone, let me close this here, you need to update the settings file. And the reason for that is the IP telephones work on DNS. All right, that's how they get their WML or the HTML that allow you to browse the internet on the phones themselves. The screen phone has a tab for the internet. The other phones use the, the display to allow you to pull information like stock tickers and things like that, because you can do that. So what I do is I edit this, but I don't edit it in WordPad or Notepad. I use a free program called EditPad Lite, and I'll put a link in the description of the video how to get this file, or get this tool. I really like it. It's, it's very easy to use, and it's very user-friendly. Okay, but the first thing you want to do once you get in this file, because you saw it's a default file, you want to back that out. You want to back the double hashtags because the double hashtags basically say ignore each, ignore these lines. So the system's going to go, I see two double hashtags, or two double? <laughs> I see two hashtags, ignore that line. So if you remove it, it's going to read that line. So I'm going to back this out. I'm going to put my DNS, C8.1.1. Whoops, that would not work. So 192.168.1.1. That's the only thing I need to set in this file for now. All right? And the reason for that is, is when your phone tries to go look for this web address right here, it's looking via DNS. It's not looking via an IP address. All right? So I save that. I'm going to close that. And now we're ready to go. Now we're going to open up TFTP server itself. All right, once it's installed, or once you have it installed and ready to go, you want to go configure it. And the way you configure it, <clears throat> first and foremost, go to options and say no incoming. All right, that's what you want to do. Next thing you want to do is you want to go to your outbound. After you set your no incoming, you want to go to outbound. And once you do outbound, you just click on browse. Oops, you can double click. You can do it this way. 
Just keep double clicking on those brackets till you find your folder. Say TFTP and 4600. All right, I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say apply. Say no to this. Say okay. Say no. And you're ready to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I've unboxed my phone and I've also purchased a uh, 48 volt power supply. Okay, and this allows me to power up my 4600 series phones as well as my 1600 series phones. You can also get PoE units, uh, the bigger ones, to basically hook up to your LAN, your, your local area network, but I'm showing you with the version I have here, okay? So, what we want to do is we want to give it power, as you can see there, and the power light comes on. Okay, I'm going to hook up the network, which goes into the line side. By the way, these units are also used for powering up EU24s for the uh, for the extensions, the extension little button units that hang off the side of 6400 series phones. Then I want to hook up the phone side. And as you can see, it goes into pins 7 and 8. I know this is kind of rough, guys, but hey. <laughs> you get what you pay for, and you're paying for free! All right, so if you look here, as it focuses in, there's two connections. The network side and the computer side. Computer side's over here, network's over there. So we're gonna plug in the network side, which is right here. As that plugs in, you can see the phone starting to power up. All right? So as it powers up, it's gonna take a bit, and I'm gonna zoom in as you can see. It says, please wait while the phone boots up. All right? So we'll wait. And as the phone boots up, you're going to see a few things happen. And this is synonymous across all 4600 series phones. It just depends on where it shows up in the screen. For the 4630 series, it's going to show up in the top up here in the top left hand corner. And when the phone boots up, and we're doing it statically this time, all right? When it when it boots up, I'll zoom in here. Okay, there's the, the application window. Press start a program. So I press start a program, which is right here, star. Okay, and it says program. Now, I'm gonna zoom in to the area. All right, so you can see it. Avaya telephone, there you go. All right, so move this over. So I'm gonna type on the keypad, 192.168. is the star key, just so you know. 1.166. When you're done entering it, you press pound sign to submit it, and it asks you for the call server, which is 192.168.1.155. Oops, I made a mistake. It's actually 150. To back that out, you hit at least on the 4600 or the 4630 you hit the headset key and when you hit the headset key and I'll show you it's gonna back it up one okay so we're gonna type 150 and hit pound to submit we leave the 1719 as default the router 192.168.1.1 also known as your gateway your default gateway that's where that goes the mask I use a class C Mass, so 255, 255.255.0. File server, 192.168.1.180. That is my TFTP server, as you saw, or as you see up here in the top left-hand corner of the TFTP server. I say enter. I leave the, uh, the 802.1Q uh, as auto. VLAN, I'm gonna leave that default for now. Save new values, yes. You heard the beep. It says new values being saved. And as the phone boots up, once it's saved the values, you're going to see a starter program. Just ignore that, okay? Because you've already programmed it. And then it's going to immediately go in and start looking for the TFTP server, which it did here. 
It finds the SCR file, which that script says go find the 46XX settings file and start updating the phone. Now, as you can see, I've already updated my phone, so it's not going to go through the full process. Remember, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to update each phone if it has not been updated. All right, and this thing will fill up. This will be a lot of statuses in here and show you all the different files that are being sent to the phone. The phone's going to save it to Flash. It's going to go verify it. It's going to reboot. It does that every single time. Now, thing to note, when you, when you change, anytime you change the 46XX settings file, it's got to reboot the phone twice. Once to send the file to the phone, the phone's going to reboot, verify that there's no changes in that file, and then set everything that you set. All right? Okay, so once your phone is booted up and it's gone through all the update process and inserted all the settings from the 46XX settings file, you now get prompted for the extensions. And in this case, we're typing 1015 pound sign, password, remember, I set it as 10, or 1313 pound sign, and then once it takes it, you now get the phone, all right? Once you've verified everything is working, the phone's going to boot up into the screen. And this goes for both 4600 or all types of 4600 series telephones. You can see your extension here, the date and time, or the date, the time, any of the buttons you have, you have programmed on your phone, your call appearances, and your soft tabs. Your soft tabs include phone, speed dial, call log, and web. Now, to verify you did your DNS setting right, if you click on web on spe specifically on this phone, it's WML, so it's a different screen on the other phones. It's going to connect to the support site, that support site that's in there. And you can see it's loaded. Once it's loaded, it's going to take you to all the different types of things. I can click on portal sites. Oops, sorry. I need to... Portal sites. And there's the different sites you can see. And I can click on news, USA Today, sports briefs. And there you go. You can now see that the information's there and you know your DNS is working, okay? Uh, I'll show you a different video on how to actually update. You can create your own internal website for these types of phones as well as the other types of phones. And I'll show you how to do that in a different video. But I'm gonna click on phone. Now I'm back on my phone. You can go off hook. I can dial 1000. You can hear it ringing, CD, and there you go. This phone is now working. Okay, so. There you go. I've showed you how to update your IP telephone, your 4600 IP telephone. And we're going to make sure that it is in there. So if you look here on the screen, knowing that we registered it and we did everything correctly, we know it works because you heard dial tone. I made a call. You do list reg. And it's going to show you list registered IP stations. And it's going to show you that 1015 is a 4630. It's an IP phone because that's the product ID. Here's the IP address that I statically assigned to it, the network region that I'm working off of, and the gatekeeper that I assigned to it as a call server. So there you go. That is how you install a 40 or a 4600 series telephone. I showed you how to uh, add the station, configure it, get the software downloaded from support, get the TFTP server working for it, and uh, update the phone, configure the phone. Make sure the phone's working and verified that it is registered in the Avaya. Okay? Hopefully this has been informative. I know it's kind of rough, but uh, if, if you, there's anything I missed, I apologize. I'll make sure I rectify that. And if there's any questions you guys have on anything specific in this video, definitely let me know in the comments or message me directly. I'll be happy to help. Guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, I will see you in the next video, which will be the same kind of phone, but more for the dynamic side or the DHCP side. All right. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.